that beneath apparently diverse natural phenomena lies a basic coordinate system, and that by applying that system to design problems, strikingly simple solutions can be found. To describe that coordinate system, he evolved his synergetic, energetic geometry, a mathematics which accommodates the requirements of many physical laws. This system gave him the mathematical basis for geodesic construction. Scientists exploring other fields have found similar patterning. Dr. Donald Kasper at the Children's Cancer Research Foundation in Boston has constructed a model of the protein molecules in an icosahedron virus. A microscopic photograph of tissue from the human eyeball produces again the familiar pattern. Algae photographed at the Max Planck Institute in Berlin repeats it. In inorganic science, mathematical crystallographer Arthur L. Loeb has constructed models of the crystal structure of corundum, the basic component of sapphire and ruby. and of cuprite, a copper mineral. These examples of synergetic, energetic patterning appear in very different kinds of natural phenomena. They are consciously articulated by Fuller in his geodesic structures. But more important to him than such practical application is the underlying process of design. So design then seems to me to be a highly objective, conscious, reconsiderate, a, an imagination that uses a great number of experiences and, and integrates the effect of those experiences and the, the, discovers principles that operate in, in the special cases and use those generalized principles and then is not just subjective about them, not just a philosopher about them, but begins to actually apply them and those, those generalized principles to many specialized cases. I find that design also then goes into a number of tools. All of these uh, designs are realized in external actions beyond outside of, of man, and they relate to man reorganizing his environment and reorganizing environment so his environment begins to work for him. Oh, nature. Yeah, she's a pretty beautiful thing. Very complex, but uh, simple if you know what you're doing. Because nature is made up of pentagons and hexagons, which just so happen to be made of triangles. The triangle sound strong. Now you see, the triangle is the first shape known to man, since the number one and the number two don't enclose a shape. Now there are other shapes, the square. When the square has pressure applied to it, it just can't take it. Any pressure given to the square is distributed on its vertices. Take this sturdy triangle, any force applied to it cannot change the vertices unless, of course, you take her apart. Ah, ah. But when back together you can see that the triangle is indeed the strongest shape. The geodesic dome is made up of triangles, one that makes the pentagons and one that makes the hexagons. The one that makes the pentagon is an isosceles triangle, meaning two sides are the same and the base isn't. The equilateral triangle makes up the hexagons and has all sides of equal shape. The triangles come together in the geodesic dome to create the pentagon and hexagon, but first you're going to have to understand how the five coincides with the six to create the sphere. This code should help you. Now it may seem complex, but all it's going to take is a little bit of creativity. Now I assure you, if you do it, make it simple, and make it work, then manifestation is well within your reach. <laughs>